Welcome back to my bathroom series. Um, this is not exactly where we left off. I have made a few changes. Um, first of all, I got rid of the windows. Um, and, you know, in the last episode where we did the lighting, I just kind of like refined the lighting and, you know, refined the ceiling lighting. And I've just made it feel a little bit closer to the references that I'm going for. So your lighting will look completely different um, depending on what references you pick. But because I wanted something quite light and ethereal, um, I really wanted to make sure that I'm nailing the lighting. Um, another kind of key thing I added was these um, floor and ceiling rebates. Um, and it just makes this little shadow gap really nice. Um, and I also added timber in the vanity and kind of carried that waterfall across um, with some towels in the bottom. So I have kind of like tweaked it a little bit, but I hope that you're maybe going with some different re references or if you do like this, I hope that you're kind of making tweaks um, to bring out your own personality and your design. So yeah, I've also just adjusted this focal length. Um, I've had to extend this bathroom out and I've actually gone with a 35 millimeters. And what that does is it actually tightens this frame up and it compresses um, everything within it. So um, as a last step, just make sure that your render settings are on eight diffuse and eight glossy, um, and you can go down to filter glossy, I think also, I've got it at 0.1, um, so it filters everything out at, um, what does it say? Adaptively blur glossy shaders after bounce, blah, 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 blah. blah. I think that one just works well for me. So just see which one works. Play around with the settings. Um, it might, you know, you might need different settings depending on what your goal is for this. So I've got 2,500 samples. I've got a noise threshold on 0.1 and I'm rendering with my GPU. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do after is chuck this into Photoshop. But if you don't have Photoshop, you can also use GIMP um, or any other kind of open source software. Um, I just like Photoshop because it's what I've used in the past and I'm really quick at it and it is non-destructive whereas GIMP is destructive. So whatever you choose to do, press F12 and I'll see you very, very soon. All right, so this is the final result from clicking F12. I quite like where this is at, but I think there can be a lot of work done in post-production to get this looking awesome. So I'm going to go up to image, save as... And I'm going to save it as a 16-bit TIFF. I'm going to underscore bathroom 3, save as image. Uh, and let's jump into Photoshop. If you kind of want to use another software that's free and open source, I actually totally get it. Um, I have just not had the best experience with um, stuff like GIMP um, and, you know, other open source software but if there is one that you'd recommend um, I'm definitely keen to test it out because I'm not a massive fan of like photoshop's um, you know the, their business model it kind of um, kind of sucks so I'm going to go right click convert to smart object and I'm going to go up to filter camera raw filter uh, so I'm going to just uh, start with the exposure, but honestly, I think it's looking pretty good so far. Um, let's play around with the contrast. What I'm going to do actually is enable uh, the color filter, um, color filters, and basically you can allow a grayscale filter to come on when you go control window C. Um, and I normally start my editing out with this. So if you're following along with GIMP or any other software, the interface is going to look pretty different, but the overall concept is going to be the same. I pretty much always start with the values, um, which is when you turn it to black and white, it's all the dark areas and all the really light areas and everywhere in between. And we want to get this histogram at the top to look, pretty look pretty like in the middle you don't want it to be super high or super low so you want it to be quite balanced um, and kind of another good um, thing to do is also bring your references across and just see how this stacks up next to them um, so I think in general they're all kind of sitting in the same area um, so I think the values are actually looking pretty good um, but a key part of this will actually be looking at the colors. 
Um, so if I just play around with these blacks a little bit and the shadows, just like tweak it a little bit, I think that's pretty good. But it's like really, really orange um, compared to the references. So I'm going to start out with the temperature at the top. Let's bring this across. Um, actually, if I use the little eyedropper here, I'm going to click on this toilet because that's probably the closest thing to pure white and that's on minus 18 and minus 15 um, and it's, it's probably quite accurate but let's just kind of bring this back across and just tweak it a little bit um, and then also what you'll notice is it's quite um, the references are quite desaturated so if I kind of like pull that um, maybe the vibrance up but the saturation down a little bit that will start to look a little bit more like the references all right so let's actually bring these whites a little bit down I'm really just kind of going back and forth um, as I do this um, because you, every single step you make actually impacts everything so it can be quite challenging to do something completely um, linear you know it's like not really the right way to do it you're always going to be going back and forth so with this curve I'm just going to create a subtle contrast S curve I might even lift the, lift the blacks up a little bit um, and I think the color mix is a really big aspect of my workflow um, so I'm going to start with the hue and you can shift things left or right the best way to learn is just by doing it um, and I can tell that there's not many reds but the oranges are pretty strong in this so if I look at my references I really want them to like the the colors here kind of feel a little bit similar um, but I think uh, it's looking a little bit grungy um, but it's getting there I think it's getting there I think maybe there's a little bit of green that needs to be taken out of this. So let's bring this tint across a little bit. It's easy to go overboard with this. Um, let's also see what the green hues are doing. Not really much. Nothing here. Um, what I find with interior shots is that the purples and the magentas actually play quite a big role. Um, and it, you probably don't want them to play a big role. So in the saturation across, I normally like bring those down quite a lot first. But honestly, there's like not much impact. I think the orange is definitely like the biggest impact here. Um, and the yellow a little bit. Green, not much. So this really is quite a, um, quite a monotone color palette. Um, and then also... Oh, Jeez, it's a little bit light, but actually I think this can be cooled off a little bit more. So let's um, let's bring this eyedropper over. Actually, I'm going to go on that white um, bottle there. So you can see that's like quite cool. What happens if I bring up this saturation? Um, maybe the contrast. Yeah, okay. I kind of want it to stay in this tonal range because actually this is a lot more accurate um, and it kind of suits the references a lot more. Um, but what I could do if it feels a little bit too bright is actually bring this exposure down a little bit and then maybe bring the shadows up, you know, a little bit too. Um, maybe the highlights, nah, highlights are fine. So this definitely feels a little bit more kind of neutral um and the clarity let's you can kind of tweak these textures and clarities a little bit but you don't want to go too far over the top um and then let's just go back to the color mixer because we're not completely done um we could boost this orange luminance up a little bit maybe the reds maybe the yellows a little bit too um but you don't want to go overboard with the luminance it's just the, like the brightness of the colors um, and let's go back to detail. We're going to boost the sharpening. 
I really like to go ham on the sharpening. And you can actually hold Alt to see a little bit better what it's doing. I think that's starting to look really, really nice. Um, nice and kind of crispy. Um, and then as an effect, we're going to add a little bit of grain just to kind of make it seem a little bit more textural and it actually gives it kind of a film feeling to it. And let's also increase this um, vignetting across to the left ever so slightly. Um, I think that's starting to look really, really nice. And honestly, I think if I do a before and after, let's bring this across. Uh, what's the best view? Um, so if I go before and after, Nope, that's not the best view. Where's the... Yeah, here we go. So before... I can't believe that actually came out of Blender. That's really, really, like, weird. But now we're really, like, bringing some nice kind of classy tones into this, um, this render. And we can kind of play around with this warmth. I think I might adjust the hue of this yellow to be a little bit more on the ready side. And then... Let's see what the oranges are doing. Now that we have the white balance kind of properly set, um, it's a lot easier to work with the colors, but I think um, because the white balance wasn't properly set before, uh, the colors were looking a little bit off. Um, let's just adjust this tint ever so slightly. Get rid of a little bit of that green. And maybe we can just adjust the saturation a little bit too. So I think, honestly, I think I'm really happy about where this is. If I go OK, and then just as a little bit on the top, I'm going to duplicate this with Control J. I'm just going to get rid of the camera raw filter. I'm going to go on Filter, Other, High Pass. And we're going to just change this to like 1.2, maybe 1.3. And now we go Normal, and we're going to change this to Overlay. And if we just kind of zoom up in here, let's move this across. Um, let's go 100% so that there's no anti-aliasing problems. And let's turn this high pass on and off. You can just see it's a little bit of crunch to the highlights and the kind of the sharp areas. We could also change this to linear light if you want more oomph and then lower that opacity right down so honestly i'm really really stoked about how this kind of um this turned out uh and i really look forward to seeing your designs and your renders um so be sure to jump on the discord there's a link in the description you can share your version of this bathroom and i really really look forward to seeing what everyone gets up to um, and um, yeah, I can't wait to see it. So stay tuned for the next series I do. And I've got some cool videos coming out soon. Um, jump on the Discord and I'll see you in my next video. Cheers.